First of all, I want to apologize in advance for all the noises you're going to hear. I have a son playing computer, a computer game in the background, and I have all the other kids home, and they're running in and out of rooms, and so it might be noisy. Hopefully not, but my mother asked me if I would go ahead and create a stand for her on which to mount a birdhouse that they have. The birdhouse is uh, a hexagon shape, I believe. I should probably double check that if it's octagonal or hexagon. I think it's hexagon. And so she said she had a 5 inch radius on that that she needed, so, or sorry, a, a, a 5 inch diameter. So we're going to select this polygon tool and draw this. I already uh, created one before, but I wanted to make video, so I'm going to do it again. So the number of points is 6. Leaving everything else the same, I'm going to come in here and take this radius and make it 2.5, which is half of what I need. Um, so now, um, that should, that's a 5 inch diameter and now what I'm going to do is change the orientation of this so layout arrange and distribute align the baseline and if you've watched all my other videos you'll notice that I'm just using the same tools that I always do um, there isn't much new to tell you I believe that I know about at least I'm going to snap this to horizontal now apply that close and we orientated this the way we wanted it to notice that it is five inches wide um, which is what I was aiming for. Now this is going to be again mounting the birdhouse and so they need a place to throw some screws in so let's go ahead and put some quarter inch holes in here. So 0.25 divided by 2 and I'll re-drill these out for accuracy. Um, when I cl cut these out they're going to probably be just a hair on the small side but that's fine because I just drill them out um, on smaller holes like this. Now, spacing these, I don't know what I necessarily want to do. It's it's not that critical. So let's go layout array and with grid selected. And let's make them two and a half inches apart and see what that looks like. So we'll just add one in each direction. That looks a little big to me, so let's shrink it down 2.25. And 2.25. That looks pretty good, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to take all of these bolt holes, group them with a control G, shift left click my hexagon, alt K to bring up my alignment window, window. and again I always have my uh, line to last object selected and just center this. And that looks pretty good to me so highlight everything, let's do an XOR weld and if I toggle my show fill this is what we have so far. Now, I'm going to be putting a one and a quarter inch pole on this, and instead of having to measure it on an odd object like this, I'd like to mark it with my plate marker to show, just for convenience, to show me where I need to uh, center this. So let's go ahead and create the one and a quarter inch circle. Um, sorry, divide that by two because it's a radius. So now I have an inch and a quarter circle. I don't want to cover it up, so I'm going to make it one point. Let's make sure our proportional scaling is is locked. Um, I'm going to make it 1.26, just slightly bigger than what I need. Shift left click my object and do a control K which remembers your last alt K setting and it centers it in this case. Um, if I show my fill again I'm not going to cut that out of there I'm just going to use it as a tool path to mark with the plate marker where I want to put this. So now what I want to do is I want to customize this for my mom a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and create, grab my text tool and click here. That's bigger than a bigger font than I need, so let's make that 0.4 in height. And I'm going to say to mom. It's about my mom's 70th birthday too, so I wanted to uh, do something like this anyway. Now I'm going to center this. Again, I'm going to do my Alt K and just center it uh, vertically. And now I want to put um, with love in here, but if I were to put with love, let me duplicate this, control D. If I were to put with love right here, with love will be a little longer so it wouldn't fit between the bolt holes and by the time I weld it, I may weld into the part that I've done the plate marking on. So what I'm going to do is, uh, actually, let me delete that. I'm going to create it on an ellipse. So let's go ahead and create an ellipse here. And something about like that maybe. Let's center it, again using the exact same commands I keep mentioning in most of my videos, if not all of them. And we're going to grab our font, or our text 
compose button and notice that the T right now is is outline just an outline of a T but if I bring it close to an arc it goes solid and once I, I that means it's going to snap this text to this arc so I'll click on it and I'll type with love but hey wait that didn't go exactly where I expected it to right so what we're going to do is alter that so if you have Torchmate CAD um, you can come up with that highlighting and go to fit to arc sorry transform fit text to path is what I want and then you can t get up to this what's called uh, well this text to path menu I guess you want to call it if you have the CAD light just highlight your text bring up alt I which is your instant replay I can't remember where that's at again so just alt I and notice that usually when you have it highlighted you'll see the correct thing that you're expecting over here it'll have a you have text to an arc um, I'm going to highlight my text to mo or sorry text with love and now you see my fit text to path shows up that should have shown up anyway with it highlighted but it didn't so just select your object over here click on double click on that and you'll bring up the exact same menu now I'm going to select this use pick start position so I want it to start about right over here I'm just guessing um, I want it to have a top start position and I want it to have the text on path and I'll click apply and that's pretty close um, I'm going to move my start position just a hair to the right and notice that I have to reselect my other options again and let's do that again just a hair to the right I don't think I did anything there I'll just go ahead and accept it for what I'm doing here. Accept. And now I'm going to get rid of this ellipse that I used to arc the text. And I'm going to center this again with my Alt K. Center that. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, I think it's far enough away from the weld that I won't cover it up. And it'll be something that my mama appreciates. So now what we're going to do is create our tool pass. All of this is assuming that you already have your plate marker set up as per the documentation from Torchmate support. Um, I will cover that in another video, but assuming that you already have all this set up, you can go ahead and apply your tool pass. So the first thing I'll do is let's go ahead and create a machine, create tool path. I'm going to create a mail tool path for the main item. I'm going to use my plasma and I'm going to go ahead and set a feed rate here because of the way I'm going to export this. I know that I'm going to be feeding at 100 inches per minute and all my lead ins and everything are set correctly so we'll say OK. And now I'm going to do my online tool paths and so we'll highlight all of those items. Machine, create tool path, online and notice that I have plate marker selected. This plate marker is a tool that I've set up. I'll cover it again in another video. I'm going to set the feed rate on that to 40. And whenever I create an online tool path, that is my default. I don't have any lead-ins or outs or anything. And I'll say OK. So now what I want to do is let's click the Show Tool Pass. And what I'm trying to do is um, get rid of all of this, the original items that I created so I don't end up double cutting or double using these lines in my, in my import. So get rid of those. We'll show our tool paths again. And I'm going to make sure that this is centered on zero, zero. Now, um, the one thing I want to check before I leave this section is going to layout sequence. Sequence by list is how I like to do it. Notice the first thing that would have been cut out was the plasma tool path, and that's not, I, not what I want. So I'm going to send that all the way to the back. Sorry, to back. And then everything else, um, I'll just let it cut in whatever order it wants to. Or, sorry, mark in whatever order it wants to. So that's fine. So now that we know that we've got those in the correct cutting order, because we're using multiple tools, um, you have to double check that. Highlight everything. And we're going to click on the, scissor, the cut tool scissors up here. And that'll bring up this window. And the only thing that I have to do, you can you can click on this numeric control manager and it'll show you the G code that's going to generate 
I don't really care about that. Um, but I'm going to click on this machining, the scissors again. It's basically click scissors, scissors. And it's going to want to export the G code for that. So I'm going to, going to call this bird, what am I going to call it? We'll call it birdhouse. I'm going to overwrite a file I already created called that. And now what we're going to do is go and cut that on my CNC machine. Um, if you want to double check it, you can go ahead and I, ha I, I run two different computers, one out in the garage, one inside, and I design on the one inside, but I, I can test my software here. So if I do an open setup, and again, this is all assuming I've got the correct um, setup file. Let me do an open setup. It's looking for a setup file. Now we'll go open G code. Okay, so now we're going to go to what I call it, birdhouse open that and because I set my feed rates in the CAD program I didn't get any complaints about not having any feed rate set you can see my feed rate set is here now look at this tool up in the top left corner right now I have none but as soon as I hit start you'll see that switch to plate marker and then when it goes to do the plasma stuff you'll see the tool switch to pla plasma let's go ahead and hit start let me shrink this window down a little bit my recording software is in the way um, for me seeing all the buttons that I need to see Okay, so we're going to hit start. Notice it says plate marker. It's going to go ahead and go around and mark this. And I'm going to go ahead and hit hold, tell it to jump to a line with love. I think we'll call it. We'll give it. Good, let it make it go right about right here. Go, move, start. Now watch the plate marker is going to switch to the plasma. Now it's going to go ahead and cut all of your internal internal part. Ugh, having a hard time talking today. Internal parts, then it'll move to your external, and your part will be done. So, this looks like it's going to work perfectly, so I'm going to go ahead and go out in my garage and cut this out, and I'll grab a video of that.